welcome back to another Uncensored Ease cooking video tutorial. Today on my menu, I am making Jamaican style curry chicken with a little hint of coconut milk and I'm making my version of what I call roti. But before we get into this video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tag a friend to tag a friend and hit the notification bell down below so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. So come on over and let me introduce to you guys what I have for this dish. All right guys, so we're here and I'm about to introduce to you guys what I have in front of me. So right here, I have my sliced onions. I have some diced Yukon Gold potatoes. I have some scallions, some garlic, some ginger root. In this bowl right here, I have my bay leaf, my thyme that I picked from my garden. I have my allspice berries and juniper berries. I also have my Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper. In this bowl right here, I have paprika, Jamaican allspice seasoning, some obey seasoning. Yes, you can use obey for chicken, for any poultry as well. I have garlic powder. I have onion powder. I have a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. I also have two different curries here in front of me and I am using the Jamaican style curry powder and I am also using the Trinidadian duck goat curry powder. I am using both curry powders because it just makes the dish even more delicious with the different spices from each country and it's just going to make this dish even more delicious. Also right here, I have my chicken that was cut up and cleaned earlier this afternoon. I had it in the refrigerator after it was cleaned and prior to cooking, I removed my chicken 15 minutes before filming. So the reason why you want to remove your meat from the refrigerator before cooking it is because you do not want to take cold meat and put it in a hot pot right away. If you do that, you won't have that soft product that you're looking for and you will be cooking your meat a lot longer than it needs to be. So let me move this over and we'll get to start seasoning or chicken. All right guys, so we're here and we're about to start seasoning our chicken, but let me put my gloves on. The last thing I need is curry on my hand and my fingers for days or in my fingernail. So what I'm gonna start with, I am going to start with all my powdered seasonings. And again, I have Obey season, Jamaican all-purpose season, paprika, a little bit of salt, black pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. And we're just going to add that into our bowl. We're going to add our ginger root, but we're only going to add a piece of ginger root. We are going to reserve this, and I'll tell you why in just a bit. We're going to add some of our garlic, and we're going to reserve some of that as well. We are going to add two of our allspice berries, and we're going to reserve the rest of the allspice berries and the juniper berries. I am going to reserve my thyme and also my leaf. I'll take my scallions and add it to my bowl. And I'll also take my onions and add it to my bowl. Next is my Trinidadian duck and goat curry. I am so excited for this dish. So we're going to use two tablespoons of this curry right here. Well, we're going to use a tablespoon and a half of this curry because this curry is really spicy and my husband can't take spice. And I am also adding my Jamaican pepper to it. My next curry is my Jamaican curry, and I'm just gonna go a little heavy on this one. So we're going to use about four heaping spoons of curry. In this bowl, I'll put half a heaping spoon of curry in here, and I'm going to reserve that, and I'll tell you why in just a bit. And now I'll just add a little blended oil. So with all your seasonings in your bowl, maybe I should have gotten a much bigger bowl with everything that's in it, but I am going to do my best to make sure everything stays in this bowl. 
you know what? Hold on. Let me add. Let me add my curry chicken in here. Because the last thing I need is curry stain in this table right here. So now that we have our season seasons in here, we're going to start mixing every part of this goodness into our chicken. So the reason why I reserved some of my product is because when I do curry chicken, I like to slightly burn some of my curry in my oil along with my juniper berries, my allspice berries, and my um, thyme and bay leaf along with my garlic and that's what I do. Most people do not burn the curry when they do it. I like to burn the curry a little bit and I don't mean burn as in burnt burn. I mean just to slightly cook the curry before I add my chicken to it. I also add ginger to my curry. A lot of people do not add ginger. Growing up as a child, my mom always tell me, if you ever go somewhere and you eat curry goat or curry chicken and it hurts your stomach afterwards, that means the curry was not cooked well and they didn't have ginger in the curry. So growing up, I've been always adding ginger root to my curry for that particular reason. It helps the curry balance itself or it helps give you a much balanced curry dish when you add a piece of ginger root to it. Yep, I should have definitely, definitely gotten a much better bowl. Wow, our curry looks so good. Now that all our stuff is all mixed together, I am going to add a piece of my Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper. Ah, oh, this smells really spicy. I won't use too much because my husband do not like spice. I'll just cut up the little pieces that I have already. And I'll just mix that in. It is best to clean and season your curry chicken overnight versus doing it the day of that you're going to cook it. That way all your seasons can soak deep into the meat of the chicken and into the bones and into everything. So this is going to rest for about an hour and we're going to come back and start cooking our curry. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we're going to start preparing for our roti. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right guys, so we're back and we're about to start making a roti. It is roti time and I am super excited to do this recipe for you guys. The last time I did some sort of roti, I did a form of flatbread, and I'll put the link in the description box down below so you guys can also check that out. Um, I also made a curry chicken in the beginning, first time I posted on YouTube, but there were like no voice behind it, so I decided to redo that video, and that will also be in the description box down below. And I'll also put this recipe for this curry chicken and for this roti recipe in the description box down below. So you guys look out for that. All right, so let's start making our roti. I have all-purpose unbleached flour, and we are going to start with six cups of flour. So this is one cup. Two. Three. Four, five, six. You are also going to need four teaspoons of baking soda. And we're just gonna pop that right in there. A pinch of salt. You need a heaping pinch, but you don't need a lot of salt. We're going to add eight ounce of full fat sour cream. I like adding sour cream to my roti or my flatbread. Um, you don't have the taste of it, but it just gives it so much more flavor. So much more. You definitely, definitely will not taste the sour cream in here. Also, you're going to need four tablespoons of melted butter. So this is one. 
two, three, four. And we're going to move this off to the side for later on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to work my, all my ingredients into each other. So you want it to be a little crumbly before we add the water. This is going to be so good, guys. So, so good. You want to try and get all the butter and the sour cream into your flour. So you want to just like keep working it a little bit until you get to that stage. And as you guys can see, my flour is starting to become very crumbly. Or I could say very mealy. That's another term. This is starting to look really good. So I'm just going to dust my hands off a bit. And we're going to start adding our water. You want to add your water little by little. You don't want to add too much. If you add too much water, it will affect the consistency of your dough and it will change the, the entire recipe. If you add it little by little, you can easily gauge the consistency of your recipe. So as you can see, this isn't too much water, so I'm just going to add a little bit more. I'm just going to keep working it in. Our dough is starting to look really good and it smells really good. I'm going to add a tad bit more water. And this Water should definitely, definitely do it. Oh wow, this looks really good already, guys. So this is starting to look really good. What I'm doing here, I'm taking all my gooey flour off of my fingers and I'm putting it back into the dough. You want to always work all this gooey dough back into your dough. This is just nothing but goodness. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove my dough from the bowl and we are going to work on a lightly dusted flour surface. So we're just gonna lightly dust the surface and we're going to knead our dough. So we are going to knead our dough until it is nice and elasticy and firm but still soft at the same time not too overworked so i'm just going to add a little bit more flour you don't want to add too much flour as your as your dusted flour because that can also change the consistency of your dough so you want to knead turn knead turn push with your palm push turn push push turn and we're going to do that for about 10 minutes all right guys so this is what our dough looks like after it's all kneaded for 10 minutes so when you put your finger in it like so you want it to spring back it didn't have a dent in it. And even if I press hard enough, my dough springs back. So that's when you know your dough is well, well kneaded. So I'm just gonna rest this right here for a little bit. I'm going to dust my pan and I am going to add my dough back into my bowl. This is going to rest for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And I am adding a damp piece of paper towel over my dough. This way my dough does not dry out. So while this is resting, we're going to start cooking our curry chicken 
And then once our curry chicken is on and good to go, we'll come back to finish our roti. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, and we're back. We're about to start making our curry chicken while our dough for our roti is resting. I am going to add four tablespoons of oil. Let me take this off. I'm going to add four tablespoons of oil into my pan. Next, I'm going to add half a heap and tablespoon of curry I added into my little prepping bowl. All my herbs and spices that I reserved. And I'll let that cook for about five minutes. This is cooking on very low heat for five minutes. And once the five minutes is up, we'll come back and we'll start making our curry chicken. All right, it's been about five minutes and my curry, my herbs and spices are all cooked. And it is smelling so good, guys. My house smells like curry heaven, curry everything. So I'm just going to stir this up a little bit. As you can see, my curry that was once bright yellow changed to a slightly deep golden brown yellow. And I am just loving the way this curry is looking. I am loving the way it is smelling. And that alone makes me know that this dish is going to not only smell good, but taste delicious as well. When you do the curry like this, it makes the dish so much better. Now... I'm going to add my curry chicken in. So we're just going to add it in little by little. And we're just going to let that slow cook in this goodness. Oh my goodness. This smells so good. I know some people add their curry when the oil is really hot. I add my curry in when the oil is slightly hot and my curry is not burnt. So, that is how I do mine. So, I'm just going to stir this up a bit from the bottom so every part of my chicken can have that really nice curry on the bottom. And we're just going to mix this a bit. This is looking so good already. So what I did right here, I added a little bit of water into my bowl and I'm using that water to aid in taking up all that seasoning, all that curry, all that goodness. And this is going to work its way back into my pot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add that into my pot. Oh. And I am going to mix it up a little bit. Turn our heat down to a medium low. And we're going to cover our curry chicken and let it spring all its natural juices and let it cook in all its natural juices. While this is cooking, we're going to work our way back over to our prep station and get our roti halfway ready to go. So let's move on over back to our prep station, guys. All right, guys, and so we're back, and our dough is looking, wow. That is looking really good. So let's take this baby out. Wow, this looks good. Let's take a closer look. Wow, that looks, that looks so good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dust very very lightly and we are going to cut our dough in equal pieces so first i'm going to cut my dough in half wow look at this that looks so good i'm going to cut in one pieces One, three pieces. Wow, guys, these look so good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each piece of dough and we are going to pat it down just a little bit. So let's do all that. We're going to pat it down just a little bit. Pat it down just a little. Thank you. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take our leftover butter and our pastry brush and we're going to brush or roti dough. So you want to do that for each roti. That looks so good. Oh my God. <laughs> Look how good this looks. Ugh. Put that right there and we're going to work our dough back into each other until we get a ball. And you want to roll. Look at that. That looks really good. Some people cut the dough like a little slit and they work it around into a ball. You can do that as well, but I prefer to do it like this. So now that all our roti dough is all rolled and it's looking good, it's like really soft and it smells so good. We're just going to dust again, just a little bit. And this is where we're going to rest our roti dough for another 15 minutes. And we're going to cover it. That way they do not dry out. So while that is resting, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, and so we're back. Our dough looks very, very well rested. Oh, my God. So I'm just going to take each of my dough and I'm going to move it off to the side. And I am going to lightly flour again. Lightly flour. And I'm just going to take my fingers to work my way around the dough. I'm going to do that for each of my dough before I continue to do anything else. I am going to lightly flour my, um, my rolling pin. And you want to roll until your dough is in a thin, round circular shape it doesn't have to be perfectly in a round shape but just thin enough to where you can have the correct consistency and texture. Because mine is definitely not in a round shape. <laughs> definitely not. Oh my god, that looks so good. All right, guys, now that our roti's all rolled out and it's done, I am completely exhausted. I am tired. I am hot, but it got done. So what I did was I separated each roti in between parchment paper. If you have wax paper, you can use wax paper. If you have parchment, use parchment, or you could even use foil paper. So I got my six out of it. This one is sticking, so I'm just going to add a little flour in between this one right here and between this one right here so our roti is looking really 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 good yep there they are so these are just going to stay right here until i am ready for them but what we're going to do is we're going to move over back to our stove side and we're going to check to see where our curry's at Wow, oh my god, that looks really good. That is simmering down nicely. That is simmering down really, really, really nicely. Let me just give that a gently stir. Wow, that looks so good. Look at this rich, rich curry, guys. Look at this. Oh my god. So what we're going to do is... I gotta take this off. What we're going to do is we're going to add... Or... Yukon gold potatoes in. 
we're going to add a little bit of culinary grade chicken stock. I didn't make chicken stock, so I decided to buy this one. Again, stop and shop brand. <laughs> I tell you guys, I use stop and shop brand for everything. So we're just going to give that a nice, nice stir. Once this cooks and continue to simmer down, the potato is going to cook down nicely. The curry is going to cook down nicely. And it's just going to be so delicious. And what we are going to do is we are going to finish this with a little hint of coconut milk to complete this dish. This looks so good. Oh my God. So let me just give this a taste and we'll see how far gravy's at. All right, so let me look. Oh wait, let me bring closer. Look how rich this is. Look at this, look how thick. And this got thick on its own. Look how rich this gravy is. Usually I add butter to round out my sauce to give it a rich, creamy texture. But look at this, I don't need butter at all. This completely did it on its own. Completely did it on its own. So let me just give this a taste. Oh my God, wow. Mm, mm, mm. That is super, super delicious. I'm gonna turn this back up to a medium high heat. And we're going to let our curry continue to cook. And we'll come back in 20 minutes. And in 20 minutes, our curry chicken should be done. Halfway through cooking the curry chicken, we'll start preparing our roti. And we're just gonna pan sear those up and just get ready for the rest of the big, big meal. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's take a look at our curry chicken. And oh my God, that looks good. That looks good, good, good. Let's give this a little stir. Now that our chicken is halfway through, we're going to start preparing our roti flatbread. Wow, the sauce is even rich. Look at that. Oh. That looks so good. So what we're going to do now, we're going to add our hint of coconut milk to our curry dish. And again, <laughs> I know you guys are going to get tired of hearing this, but this is stop and shop, right? <laughs> I tell you guys, this is no joke. I um, use stop and shop, right, for everything. Oh my God. For every, every single thing. Wow. Look at this. This looks so good, guys. Ugh. I love a good curry with a lot of nice juices in it, with a lot of nice curry and gravy in it. Ugh. I love a nice curry like that. So let me stir this up a bit. Let me go from the bottom, because all that goodness stuck on the bottom, that's what you call fond. You want to pick all that up because that's where all the flavor settles. The flavor settles at the bottom and it just gives this really nice caramelized coating on the bottom. And you just want to pick that up and just put it back into the dish and just slowly work it back into the curry. Oh my God, that looks so good. Let me give this another taste and see how far we are at. This is so rich. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Stir it up a bit. And just let it continue to simmer. This is all the water the chicken sprung along with the little bit of culinary chicken stock I used, and it is looking really, really good. All right, let me give this another taste to see how far my season's at. Perfect. While our chicken is continuing to simmer, we're going to start making our roti. So we're just going to add a little oil, and our flame is on a medium high heat, and we're just going to start adding our roti. So you want to cook the roti 
for about two minutes on each side. Depending on the thickness of your roti, it determines how long you cook each side. My roti aren't that thick and they're not that thin. That is the reason why I am making my roti cook for two minutes on both sides. You want to cook all that flour out. And this is looking really good already. Really good. I'm just gonna land that right there. We're going to add more oil to our pan. And we're going to add our roti. As soon as you start to see a roti bubble around, it's time to flip it. That looks really good, guys. You want to move it around so your roti don't burn. We're going to land that right there. Oh my God, guys. So this is what our roti looks like. They look really, really good. I brushed it with a little bit of the butter I had left over. And if you want, you can leave it whole. But in this sense, I am going to cut them in half. And in half again. Oh, look at this. This is nothing but deliciousness. And we're going to move our roti onto our plate. So that is our roti. Now let's take a look at our curry chicken. Oh my God, our curry chicken is done. Done, done, done. Look at this good, rich deliciousness. Oh, potatoes are cooked, the chicken is cooked, the gravy is just everything. So we're going to move over to our plate up station and we're going to plate up and we're going to come back and we're going to see what this dish is like. All right guys, so this is it. This is my version of my roti and my Jamaican style curry chicken. This is the complete dish. I used two different curries for this dish. And it is looking really good. And I just can't wait to dig in and see what this dish is all about. <laughs> Again, guys, it's your girl Ro from Uncensored Ease. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tag a friend to tag a friend. And hit the notification bell down below so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. Thank you guys for always supporting me. Thank you for always being here. Thank you guys for always watching. I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.